Hey guys, Insomni here with some more AFK Arena. Today we're going to be looking at rumors with possibly two new dimensional heroes. As we know from Ezio, Ezio was actually copied straight from another game. Even his skill set was straight from the other game that he came from. Um, so we have seen it with Lilith in the past, actually just bringing over heroes, bringing them over as dimensionals. We've seen the same with um, SNK and Yukio, just bringing over heroes from other games. So this is going to continue. One big thing that I fear with the dimensional heroes is if they go ahead and make this cost Labyrinth tokens, it is going to drive me absolutely crazy because people have just been burning all of their tokens and all of their resources to save up for um, Nakaruru. And then they went ahead and started saving for Ezio. So hopefully it does not continue and there is a free to play way. And if they are bringing two heroes in addition, I hope it is not like the two heroes that we just got with Zephyril and Lucrita. That way we don't have to choose between one of the two. And I hope that it is not purchase only. So ideally what I would like to see in my aspect is go ahead and use the resources, use the guild store, use the barracks as we've seen with the last hero, use the labyrinth tokens, use the challenger stone store um, tokens, but go ahead and make these specifically that you can use any amount, any quantity, you can use even 60 of one, raising up the caps on the um, tokens themselves that way we just don't stock up our mailbox with tokens, but we can actually use them. So essentially, if I wanted to save a lot of my guild store or my guild coins, um, I could go ahead and save this to use, you know, more than I believe it was five of this one or 10 of this one, but I could use 15, 20, 25, the quantity that I needed to, to go ahead and pick up the new heroes if that is the route they're going. If not, just either letting us choose a hero and then letting us earn the other one or vice versa. They need to come up with a better system of making these heroes obtainable without foregoing the red chest, without foregoing Wukong and Arthur, space emblems of space. Um, a lot of the stuff that we've been putting in here that we've been trying to accommodate and accumulate to build our heroes that we already have in the current game without sacrificing it for the new heroes. So let's go ahead and we'll take a look at both new heroes and we're gonna look at their abilities. Um, I'm not too familiar with either of them. Both of the heroes are coming from Overlord, which is a game that I've never played. As many of you know, AFK Arena for over a year has been the only game that I play at this point. So let's go ahead and we'll take a look at them. So here's the first hero that we're gonna look at, Ains, A-I-N-Z. As you can see here, looks like an undead hero, looks very, very cool. Absolutely love the graphic art. This is just some of the picks, not depicting exactly what it's gonna look like or what it's gonna look like actually coming to AFK Arena, but this is what I found when I put in Ains and I put in Overlord. This was the first photo that came up. So very, very cool looking. Looks like a mage, which is awesome. So let's go ahead and look at the abilities. So falling down, Ains begins a chant that lasts a few seconds, after which damage is dealt to all enemy targets. If the chant is interrupted, Ains will recover energy points. So that could be the ultimate ability where it is just, you know, three seconds. So it reminds me of Sophia's Falling Sun ability where it just has to power up. Once it is unleashed, doing a lot of damage, again, essentially across the, um, the heroes that it affects. This is all pulled off of Reddit at this point. Not exactly sure what the skills will actually be, but he would be our first dimensional caster hero, which would be absolutely phenomenal. Magic caster, Ains normal attacker changes the following ability, which are used in a cycle. Greater thunder deals damage to enemy target. Gravity maelstrom deals damage to the enemies and any other nearby targets. True dark deals damage to enemy targets and prevents them from using their ultimate ability for a few seconds. So right there we have a little built-in Aziz as well as damage and AoE damage, so very, very cool. The goal of all life is death. After 30 seconds of battle, all enemies lose a percentage of their current health and are stunned, which would be very, very powerful ability. Because um, remember, battles are a minute and a half, so after 30 seconds, if you're guaranteed a stun, that is very similar to one of the relics that we get or one of the um, relics that we get in the labyrinth run right now that actually after a short amount of time it stuns the enemies then the final one is steady preparations 
At the beginning of battle, Ains recovers or receives a shield equal to a percentage of his max health, which lasts a few seconds. While the shield exists, he is immune to enemy control ability and continues gaining energy points and a permanent attack rating and defense rating addition until the shield disappears. So again, this kind of reminds me what we've seen overall with different abilities that we've seen. The, the scaling with now Izold, the scaling that we've seen with Taylene, um, very, very cool. And it also reminds me of um, Damon with his ability to actually scale the damage over time. So very, very cool looking. Those could be the possible four abilities, not including furniture, not including signature items. So let's go ahead and look at the next one. The second hero is Albedo, or Albedo, Albedo, I would say. Um, as you can see here, it looks like a winged female, which does kind of look like another caster. So if they add two casters in here, will give us a full set of dimensional gear, meaning that now we have Arthur's gear, we do have Nakaruru's and Yukio, so the agility gear, and now we would get the caster gear in here. Let's go ahead and look at the abilities she may bring. Genu Gappa, uh, Albedo instantly teleports to the most densely, densely populated area of enemies and deals AoE damage to all nearby enemies. A percentage of the total health dealt to the enemies is converted into a shield, which has a duration of eight seconds. So definitely pretty cool there. Um, Blackguard Albedo receives a shield with a value equal to a percent of her attack rating, after which she teleports next to a backline ally with the lowest health and protects them. While the shield exists, neither Albedo nor the ally she is protected can be controlled by enemies, and Albedo shall bear all of the damage instead of the ally. If the hero Azin Olgao is an ally, not exactly sure. Albedo is prioritized him with the ability above all other allies. So again, it seems like these two do have a connection. Um, so essentially, she's going to do AoE damage with an ultimate ability, which is going to give her a shield. The shield, she is going to be able to block other heroes. So she might actually be a tanking class, even though she does not look like it. Um, Albedo teleports next to a random ally that is currently near an enemy and deals damage to the enemy, stunning them. If it is any Ozao is an ally, Albedo will prioritize him in the ability. So similar again to the Lacrita, to the um, Zafriel, they, they kind of favor each other and they kind of target each other, as you can see. So essentially looking so far out of three skills, one, she is going to do damage with a shield. Two, she is going to shield an ally again. And then the third ability, Shield Lord, going to go ahead and shield an ally again. So, so essentially, right now, three of the four abilities are tank, tank, tank. So if she is a tank, if she does come with the tanking relic, would be super, super powerful, especially being able to keep heroes alive. But there has to be some point where she is going to do damage, which brings us to her last ability. The final one with a very difficult pronunciation, Hermes Tris, Trismegetus. During battle, um, Abiolo's crit rating is increased if she is dealt a critical strike. The attacker's attack rating will be reduced. This ability cannot be stacked. So very, very interesting. Seems like she is going to be 100% defensive hero with not much damage. That is two very new, very rumored heroes at this point from the Overlord game. Big shout out to Mr. Panaphonic on a Reddit for the information. Very, very cool to see. Um, if those two heroes come from tuition or come to tuition, that way we can use them. Also, in addition, we did hear rumors about a possible Prince of Persia um, kind of crossover dimensional hero. So it'll be very, very interesting to see what AFK Arena does have to bring. Always super, super excited with any of the content. They just really need to deliver the heroes in a little better fashion than using all of our resources um, versus buying them. There's going to be a couple different options, but we'll have to wait and see what AFK Arena has to bring. So let me know in the comments what you guys think. Very, very cool to see possibly two new rumored heroes in the future. So again, let me know in the comments what you guys think. And as always, thank you guys for watching.